Hello there and welcome to Complete Games with me, James. Hope you guys are all doing well. And this is the Explorer Note read-through from Scorched Earth. As we continue our Explorer Note read-through, we focus on the survivor Raya, a priestess from ancient Egypt, and her notes were written in hieroglyphs. Before we begin, I just want to remind you I'm on Twitter, at JamesCG12, and if you'd like to keep up with news on upcoming content for the channel, and when I stream live over on Twitch, then follow me there. Thank you. The Explorer notes from both Raya and John Decaia focus on telling us the story of the civilization that lived on Scorched Earth before the arrival of both Rockwell and Helena. And we do find out at the end of Elena's notes that the character known as Wally Al-Azad is in fact Raya. So sit back, relax and enjoy the notes from Raya on Scorched Earth. Even at this distance, the great obelisk is beautiful. It's like a pillar of Amon Ra's light given solid form. I wish we could have made our camp right beside it, but the others thought it might bring unwanted attention. At least we are close enough to be in its shadow and drink from the river that runs beneath it. I always face it when I pray to Hathor, and though I can feel the scepticism in my companions' gazes, my faith is unshaken. For it was my faith that guided us here to this place rich with water and resources. All agreed, it's the ideal location for a settlement. Wherever we are, the gods are watching over us, I know it. Construction has been going well. None of us are architects, but we have been adjusting to our roles. Gaisha's broad shoulders and booming laugh conceal a keen mind, and we started making better progress once I convinced him to stop hauling rocks and start drawing up plans to let Amir focus on starting a garden where he's more at home. I have focused on trying to keep us organised and maintaining our spirits myself. I wish I could do more. Sadly, while a priestess has many gifts, manual labour is not one of them. I often find myself winded before midday. I pray the others do not find me burdensome. Back in Luxor, I always tried to stay out of politics. I never aspired to be divine adoratrice as some priestesses did. I often found that such selfish ambitions often led to suffering both for oneself and for others. So when Gaisha referred to me as our leader today, I found myself surprised. I'd never asked for such a position, and the others never bestowed it on me in any official manner. It just happened naturally. I am not sure what to make of it, but if this is Hathor's will, then I will try to guide these people as best I can. Our settlement has grown so quickly during these hectic months. So many wandering souls have found their way here seeking shelter and companionships. I've done my best to welcome everyone I can. If treated with understanding, most become productive, loyal members of our community. But I am no fool. I know that hearts can have two natures. Hathor offers compassion, while Sakmet brings devastation. As we grow in size, we become a riper target for those with malice in their hearts. Gaisha has tried to organise a militia, but I fear it inadequate. For now, I must be weary and pray to the gods to send us a true warrior. It took longer than I'd hoped, but I believe the gods have heard my prayers. At least I believe so. When I imagined what a true warrior might be like, I cannot say that I imagined Captain Takea. He speaks tersely and has no sense of decorum and in general is rather prickly. He was nigh unapproachable for the whole day when we decided his position should be called Captain instead of the nonsense word he proposed. Yet he has been getting results, or so I'm told. When I find time, I ought to observe him in action myself. I'm still not accustomed to the loud, fiery weapons that our new captain is training his men to use. Their power is so destructive that it seems almost too much for mortal men to possess. Yet Captain Decaia strolls up and down his line of trainees like they were wielding wooden swords, and twirls his weapon almost absent-mindedly. It's somewhat unnerving to find someone so calm around such potent instruments of death. But I suppose that's why he had so much success in securing our borders. I can only hope that we need but one Captain Decaia, and that I never have to use those weapons myself. It's been such a blessing to be able to spread Hathor's joy and love to so many people. At first my daily prayers garnered but a few curious observers. Yet soon observations turned to questions and questions turned to participation. Now that there are so many of us, we've even begun to construct a shrine. I truly wish I could teach these eager new students all day long, but my duty to the village must come first. Perhaps when the future here is finally secured, I shall be able to live the life of a priestess again. But for now I have too many people counting on me. 
I cannot abandon them. Names are a curious thing. We assign them great weight, yet they do not change the substance of the person, place or thing they belong to. I suppose that line of thinking is why I never dwelled on the name of our humble village. Yet now that it has grown to become somewhat less humble, our home can go nameless no longer. People must call it something. To that end, Nosti is as good a name as any. I'm told that it means to know in some old important language. And whatever our citizens intended that to symbolise when they chose it, I know this. While we are here, we are under the protection of the gods. Lost souls from all across the desert continue to prostrate themselves before Nosti's gates. I adamantly refuse to turn anyone away that does not mean us harm, but I realise that that has left us with many mouths to feed. As a result, Nosti's fields are our most valuable asset. Fortunately, Gaisha's designs and my organisation of labour and resources have once again proven effective. Not only did we implement an effective irrigation system, but we've encased our crops in a large protective structure made of a clear shiny substance called glass. Every morning it sparkles with Amon Ra's light, like a great gem, a beautiful reminder of what we can accomplish when we unite in purpose. Despite our best efforts and the blessing of the gods, tragedy is unavoidable in these strange lands. Yesterday it struck Nosti once more in the form of a mantis attack, and while I could not undo what had been done, I hope that I was able to bring some small comfort to those who knew the victims best. Though we lacked the resources to properly enter the dead tombs, we still held a ceremony in their memory and I made time to speak privately with anyone who wished to. Between that and my usual duties, I am physically and emotionally exhausted. But when my people are suffering, I cannot afford to rest. Early on I had handled all of Nosti's trade negotiations. I have had trouble growing out of the habit. I suppose that's why every caravan or hunter that passes through our gates knows my name. Some still insist on speaking with me personally, but I do not mind. I find these dealings rather engaging. It's like playing a game of words. One such caravan arrived yesterday, bearing a haul of metal ingots. Our venerable captain suggested that I bring a contingent of guards to the negotiations, but I would rather not. If our guests are intimidated, they may back out and I would be remiss to waste such an opportunity. I shall gladly admit that I erred. I shall even admit that I owe Captain Decay on my life and offer him all the gratitude he is due. Yet that does not excuse such merciless behaviour. Those so-called merchants may have stooped to viciousness and cruelty trying to kidnap me. But that one had surrendered. There was no need to execute him on the spot, was there? It's so hard to see why light ends and darkness begins in such a violent place. Perhaps if I could adequately protect myself, we could have avoided this needless bloodshed. Yes, I think it's time. I shall master these explosive weapons and Captain Decayer is going to help me. Step by step, I'm learning how to shoot. During my first few lessons, the weapons almost jumped out of my hand when I fired them. But my arms have grown stronger and my aim truer. Captain Decayer's presence has been helpful. The same calm that is unnerving from afar has been steadying from up close. He does not waste his breath in exaggerated praise or criticism. He simply keeps me focused on what I need to do and everything else just falls away. Considering where I started, he's been very patient with me. Perhaps I should be more patient with him. In ancient times, gentle Horfor took the form of the fierce warrior goddess Sakmet and unleashed her wrath upon the human world. Yet even during her relentless slaughter, Hathor was within Sakmet, as Sakmet was always within Hathor. And when she was eventually calmed, the peaceful goddess of joy and love returned. As it is with the goddess, so it is with mankind. The vicious can become kind, and the kind-hearted can become violent for all his past transgressions. Captain Decay is no different. He did not grasp Pathor and Sakmet's tale when I told it to him the other day, but if he keeps trying to better himself, then perhaps one day he will. In principle, I have turned into a competent marksman, yet in practice how will I fare? When the time comes, could I end another human life? I'm not sure. My mouth grows dry with fear at the very thought. The warrior spirit of Sakmet surely resides somewhere within the recess of my heart, but search as I may, I cannot find it. As training, I offered to put down some of our beasts that had grown deathly ill. It was a merciful act, 
but it still drew tears to my eyes and twisted my stomach into knots. I must learn to act in spite of these feelings. My life may depend on it one day. And that concludes part one of the Explorer Notes from Scorched Earth and Raya. Don't forget to check back with me this time tomorrow as we'll be doing a video every day on this channel for the first 12 days of Christmas and we continue part two of Raya's story and Scorched Earth. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe for more art content from myself. But until this time tomorrow, I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see you.